Let me call to order the City Commission meeting of July 19th, 2022. I'm going to ask the City Clerk to please call the roll. Mayor Weissman? Here. Vice Mayor Landman? Here. Commissioner Friedland? Present. Commissioner Joel? Here. Commissioner Dr. Marks? Here. Commissioner Narotsky? I think he's on. Uh, I believe he's on Zoom. Um, Commissioner Shelley? Here. Mr. Wasson Here. and Mr. Myers, Here. you have a quorum. Thank you so much. Can we all please rise? And former Commissioner Weinberg, can I ask you to please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? <laughs> to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Let me ask the city manager if there are any deletions or additions to the published agenda. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'd just like to bring to your attention that under Section 8C, Zoning Hearings, uh, that item C is... Uh, the applicant asked to have that deferred to September 13th, 2022. And I have two small modifications to the uh, consent agenda, which I've included on your, uh, in front of your packages. On item C, the out front agreement, there was a modification to dimming the lights of the um, proposed LED sign and also to uh, make a modification on the advertising section that if a, an emergency existed, that they would have less than 10 days for us to bring it to the attention of, uh, uh, to, for posting it on the LED sign. And on item I, the, um, the police counseling services, we, uh, we, we're putting in that the therapist must be licensed and have special training for uniform police officer counseling. Both of those uh, consent items, um, Commissioner Marks had made a recommendation uh, to me earlier, and they were good recommendations, so they were included. So again, I'm going to ask you, are you pulling anything from the consent agenda? No. Thank you. Okay. Um, is there anyone else that would like to remove an item from the consent agenda? Very good. I need a recommend. Uh, I need a resol I, I need a motion for approval of the items on the consent agenda made by Commissioner Shelley, seconded by Vice Mayor Landman. Can I please ask the city clerk for a roll call vote? Commissioner Friedland? Yes. Commissioner Joel? Yes. Commissioner Dr. Marks? Yes. Commissioner Narotsky? Maybe. Maybe. Yes. Commissioner Shelley? Yes. Vice Mayor Landman? Yes. And Mayor Weissman? Yes. The motion passes. Okay. Let me go back to item four. And do we have any special presentations? Yes, Mayor, I do. Then please proceed, City Manager. Good evening, everyone. I would like you to meet Detective Michael Leoncini, who I've had the pleasure of knowing over the last four years. Uh, this detective has started his career in 1980, a long time ago, in an old uh, a city not far from here, Hollywood. Spent a little time in Golden Beach and then finally saw the light and came to Aventura in 2002. Uh, I meet Mike often on the elevator and uh, it's a pretty much a running, a running joke in the department. Every day is his birthday, so it's a regular, it's a regular occurrence. You know, just recently I received an email from somebody about the detectives in Aventura and, and the great work they did, and the, and the person was just very thankful for the job and, that they did and, and helped them put somebody away for four years for, for uh, stealing their identity. Mike is part of that group of people that we're very fortunate to have that work here that really go above and beyond uh, for the residents. I worked in New York City Police Department for many years, 
And I can tell you, you guys are right there and some of the best I've ever worked with. So oh, thank I wonder, you very much. I'd like to offer you this. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I would like to, you know, I'll ask uh, your chief to come up. Just to... Hey. Oh, he gets to say. I get to say a couple words. So uh, Mike came to us from Golden Beach in 2002, uh, a seasoned officer, many, many years. And uh, throughout the years, he's got a great sense of humor, but along the way has been able to teach a lot of our younger officers uh, what it means to be a career cop. And uh, not only to his devotion to the community, but his devotion to his fellow officers. And um, most of us, or all of us are his coworkers, but all of us are your friends as well. And um, it's been a great relationship. You've, you've had a great time here. We loved you here. Uh, you can stay as long as you want. And uh, I just want to be one of the first tonight to wish you a happy birthday. <laughs> happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you. OK, the next item. On the agenda is ordinances, first, first reading and public input. I'm going to request the city clerk to please read the ordinance, 6A. An ordinance of the City of Aventura, Florida, amending Chapter 33, Parks and Recreation of the City Code of Ordinances, Section 33-1, Residency Policy for Use of Portion of Aventura Founders Park, to further define the portion of Founders Park subject to the policy. <laughs> providing for severability, providing for inclusion in the code, and providing for an effective date. Can I have a motion for approval of the ordinance? Made by Commissioner Friedland, seconded by Commissioner Joel. I'm going to request the city manager to review this item, please. Thank you, Mayor. This ordinance change will extend the Founders Park residency requirement to Founders Park South, where we are currently uh, underway in designing new tennis and pickleball courts, uh, this would make sure that any resident from Aventura would be able to sign up and have access to those courts. And uh, in the past, it was it didn't extend to that side of the street, so this is addressing those needs. Okay. Anyone have any questions, comments? Okay. Can I have a motion for approval of the ordinance, made by Vice Mayor Landman, seconded by Commissioner Shelley? Um, no questions. I'll open it to public comment. Anyone from the public wish to address us on this item? Please come forward. Use the mic. Your name and address, please. Okay, you can come back later and talk then because this, all right, because this is about the city ID. Okay. So if you want to, you can, if you want to, you can, and if not, you can come back later. Okay, I would like to get this out. Um, I'm here for Founders Park South and uh, City Manager. That's not the item we have. It's, we are familiar about this item. Um, to me, I want to tell our city commission and city manager the Founders Park South is a very special place for many of the Aventura residents. For rich and wealthy, they can go to vacation to a different part of country or different part of the world. And for many working class, this is the only place for them to go to vacation and relax and enjoy quiet and peace. I just hope our city commission could consider to save this park at its peace and quiet city. That's all. Thank you. Anyone else? I want to remind you again, this is about a residency requirement. I was going to ask, do I add or wait? I'll wait then. I wanted to add to what she was saying. OK, I have no idea. It's not. Mr. Attorney. Yeah, uh, Mayor, uh, you're right. This is about residency. If anyone wants to speak to substantive issues about Founders Park South, that should be a public comment. Okay, we'll have public comment, so you can be sure you'll be able to come up later. 
Okay, anyone want to address the residency issue? <laughs> All right, if not, I'm going to ask the city clerk for a roll call vote. Commissioner Friedland? Yes. Commissioner Joel? Yes. Commissioner Dr. Marks? Yes. Commissioner Narotsky? Yes. Commissioner Shelley? Yes. Vice Mayor Landman? Yes. Mayor Weissman? Yes. The motion passes. Thank you so much. I'm now going to request the city clerk to read the ordin ordinance B. An ordinance of the city of Aventura, Florida, amending chapter 33, Parks and Recreation of the City Code, to create section 33-3, smoking prohibited, to prohibit its smoking in city parks, providing for severability, providing for inclusion in the code, and providing for an effective date. Can I please have a motion for approval of this ordinance made by Commissioner Friedland? Seconded by Vice Mayor Landman. I'm going to request the city attorney to review the item. Thank you, Mayor. So for years, the, uh, the state preempted the city's ability to uh, prohibit smoking on beaches and parks. And in this last legislative session, uh, the, the uh, legislature offered a bone to municipal and county government and uh, allows uh, local governments to, in fact, prohibit smoking in the parks and beaches, uh, with the exception of unfiltered cigars. Uh, so uh, <laughs> so uh, the, uh, the city can move forward with that, and uh, the, the proposed ordinance would uh, ban smoking in the uh, city parks and also the city trailway, the, the SOFR trailway, because that's, that's considered to be uh, connected to the park system. Okay. And for people who, who violate this ordinance, it's written into the code that they would be treated like any other, well, they're treated uh, as a code violation if they were cited. And can I ask the city manager, what are the penalties? Uh, I, I believe it would be a $250 fine. And then if you did it again, it would go up to 500 Okay. Do any members of the commission have anything they want to add or say about this item? All right. I just would like to say that as soon as it was legal for us to pass this no smoking, this is the first time we can do it. And we're doing it with all haste because once they meet in Tallahassee, they can change their minds about some things. So we need to get it in our books as soon as possible. Um, anyone else on the commission have anything on this item? I'm opening it for public comment. Anyone from the public wish to address this item? Ms. Rosenblatt. Marge Rosenblatt, 19333 West Country Club Drive, Aventura, Florida, 33180. Excuse me, did I hear you correctly? Unfiltered cigars are going to be allowed? By state law. By state law. By state law. Is that, that was written into the statute. I'm shocked. <laughs> Again, still. Is there anything that the commission can do as far as that when the legislature goes back in session? For, for me, um, he, we'll always keep our eye on it, but you can be sure by the way it was written, there were powers that be that lobbied very hard for that to get in this portion of of the legislature. So we will keep our eye on it. I think we're the first city to take advantage of it because it really just came out. The governor just signed it, I think, a week or two ago. That's correct. Two weeks ago. Okay, Thank you. So it, it is what it is, but we'll take every step in the right direction we can get, and we won't let perfect spoil good. Okay. If there's no one else from the public that wishes to speak, I'm going to close it for public comment and ask the city clerk for a roll call vote. Commissioner Friedland? Yes. Commissioner Joel? Yes. Commissioner Dr. Marks? Yes. Commissioner Narotsky? Yes. Commissioner Shelley? Yes. Vice Mayor Landman? Yes. Mayor Weissman? Yes. The motion passes. Thank you so much. I'm going to request that you please read Ordinance C. An ordinance of the City of Aventura, Florida, amending the City Code of Ordinances at Chapter 2, Administration, Article 3, Advisory Boards, by repealing Division 7, the Youth Advisory Board, providing for severability, providing for inclusion in the code, and providing for an effective date. Can I please have a motion for approval of the ordinance? Made by Commissioner Shelley, seconded by Vice Mayor Landman. I'm going to request the city attorney to please review this item. 
Uh, thank you, Mayor. So uh, this item would uh, repeal the Youth Advisory Board. Uh, the city commission by charter has the authority to create and dissolve advisory boards. And uh, by exercising this authority, the uh, Youth Advisory Board would no longer exist after the, uh, after the uh, second reading of the ordinance. Uh, in its place, which you've approved by consent, is a youth council. Uh, and the reason, I guess, to why it's important, at least in my opinion, to re repeal the Youth Advisory Board and create a, a less formal youth council is because the, the state ethics rules and sunshine law that apply to all government advisory boards include a board consisting of minors. And it just doesn't seem to make sense to have such, uh, such restrictions on a board composed of, of minors. So with that, uh, the commission has the authority to repeal this particular board. Thank you so much, and thank you for your work on the item. Anyone in the commission want to address this item? Vice Mayor Lamman. I just want to reiterate that although we're dissolving the council, we're, uh, the advisory board, we're creating a council, so our youth will continue to be involved, and they'll have a place, and they'll be active. It's just, it will be, uh, you know, uh, uh, an easy, modified. yeah, slightly modified and more appropriate for the youth who are involved in our community. Thank you. Anybody else on the commission? Anyone from the public wish to address this item? All right, I'm going to close it to public comment, and I'm going to ask the city clerk for a roll call vote. Commissioner Friedland? Yes. Commissioner Joel? Yes. Commissioner Dr. Marks? Yes. Commissioner Narotsky? Yes. Commissioner Shelley? Vice Mayor Landman? Yes. And Mayor Weissman? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you so much. I'm going to request that you now read ordinance labeled D. Aventura City Commission acting in its capacity as the governing board for the Aventura City of Excellence School, ACES. An ordinance of the City Commission of the City of Aventura, Florida, amending ordinance number 2021-05 which adopted a charter school operating and capital budget for the Aventura City of Excellence School for fiscal year 2021-2022, July 1 to June 30. By revising that 2021-2022 fiscal year budget document as outlined in Exhibit A attached here too, authorizing the city manager to do all things necessary to carry out the aims of this ordinance and providing for an effective date. Thank you. Can I please ask for a motion for approval of the ordinance made by Commissioner Joel, seconded by Commissioner Friedland? I'm prior to asking the city manager to review the item, I spent a great, great deal of time on it. And I really want to thank um, our budget department chief, Melissa Cruz, for the amount of time and effort you put into making this budget. I really and truly appreciate it. City Manager, will you please review the item? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, we amend the year-end budget for ACES at, uh, w once a year. This year, the amount was $1,772,887, of which $1,552,664 were uh, all related to federally federal fund from ESSER grants, which was to be reimbursed to the city for educational services, additional teachers, and training. The rest of the adjustment or, or, or um, year end adjustment is for transportation related services, for having bus monitors in, on the buses, and uh, repairs and maintenance in $140,000. Most of that cost was due to painting of the school. Every year we paint uh, ACES um, at the end of the year, beginning for the next year. Uh, the $140,000 actually represents two years of painting. Uh, last year's painting and this year's painting all hit this year. So that's the, uh, the, the lion's share of the $140,000. Okay, anybody on the commission have any comments or questions? Anyone from the public wish to address this item? Seeing that there's no one who wants to address it, I'm going to close it for public comment and ask the city clerk for a roll call vote. Commissioner Friedland? Yes. Commissioner Joel? Yes. Commissioner Dr. Marks? Yes. Commissioner Narotsky? Yes. Commissioner Shelley? Yes. Vice Mayor Landman? Yes. And Mayor Weissman? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. 
The next on item on our agenda is item number seven, ordinances, second reading and public hearings. I'm going to request the city clerk to read the first ordinance. An ordinance of the City of Aventura, Florida, adopting the 2021 evaluation and appraisal report based amendments to the City of Aventura Comprehensive Plan, authorizing transmittal to review agencies, providing for severability, and providing for an effective date. Thank you. Can I please have a motion for the approval of the ordinance? Made by Commissioner Marks, seconded by Vice Mayor Landman. I'm going to request Community Develop Direct. Development Director Kevin Klopp to please review the item. Good evening, Mayor and Commission. Kevin Klopp, Community Development Director. This is the second reading of your evaluation and appraisal report based comprehensive plan amendments. Uh, you may recall that uh, you adopted the amendments on first reading in April. And those amendments are based upon a report that was done the previous year, which has to be done every seven years in order to uh, ensure that the city's comprehensive plan remains compliant with state statutes. The amendments were provided to the state and all the review agencies after your adoption in April. We did receive comments back with some uh, requests for some additional changes to ensure that our revisions uh, are compliant with statutes. Nothing we were uh, concerned about doesn't impact uh, the policies to any great extent. Um, and we did review those in a recent workshop meeting. The actual uh, amendments, uh, it's important to note, are uh, really very much based upon sea level rise and climate change and concerned about that, identifying our vulnerabilities and coming up with policies uh, aimed at reducing, reducing our risk. Uh, and they're listed here for you, uh, hard infrastructure strategies as well as policy strategies. The other part of the element that, or the other part of the amendments that we had to do was adopt a property rights element, uh, adding a chapter specifically about uh, ensuring that your land use decisions and all decisions are made uh, with respect for property rights and people's rights to participate in those decisions. So we request that you would adopt those amendments uh, as revised uh, between first and second reading to make the state requirements. Uh, the next steps is we will provide those amendments to the state. We've already previewed them with the state. We're confident that they will be found in compliance. Uh, we will await that uh, compliance finding. It takes about a month, and then we'll do it all over again in seven years. Thank you. Thank you so much. Any commissioners have any questions or comments for Mr. Klopp? Anyone from the public wish to address this item? Seeing as there's none, I'm closing it to public comment, and I'm going to ask the city clerk for a roll call vote. Commissioner Friedland? Yes. Commissioner Joel? Yes. Commissioner Dr. Marks? Yes. Commissioner Narotsky? Yes. Commissioner Shelley? Yes. Vice Mayor Landman? Yes. And Mayor Weissman? Yes. The motion passes. Thank you. I'm going to ask you now to read the ordinance marked C. An ordinance of the City of Aventura, Florida, amending Section 31 143, Residential Zoning Districts of the City's Land Development Regulations to permit buildings in the RMF4 Zoning District to cast shadows on properties located in business zoning districts upon conditional use approval, providing for severability, providing for inclusion in the code, and providing for an effective date. Can I ask for a motion for approval of the ordinance? Made by Commissioner Friedland, seconded by Commissioner Joel. I'm going to request the city manager to please review this item. Thank you, Mayor. Um, this ordinance. Uh, I think we're going to have Kevin Klopp, our community services director, review this. Thank you. Uh, this is second reading of an ordinance that would uh, change the zoning code uh, slightly to allow uh, a conditional use, meaning the city commission would still be able to uh, see each of these applications on a one by one basis. Uh, but currently, uh, residential projects cannot 
cast a shadow onto other residential projects. Business projects can't cast a shadow onto residential projects, but business can cast shadow onto business, whereas residential can't cast a shadow onto business. So it was thought that if commercial can cast a shadow on the commercial, why not residential? As we see more mixed-use proposals, we thought that was the right thing to do. So this would allow an RMF property to cast a shadow on a business-owned property as a conditional use. Currently, business-to-business -business is allowed, but residential-to-business is not. Uh, this is specifically how it would look in the code, simply adding uh, item C, buildings designated, Designed and situated in a way that they cast a shadow upon properties located in business zoning districts would be allowed as a conditional use. Mayor, at the last meeting, you did ask a question. I answered uh, that the question was, did we analyze the zoning map to determine exactly where this was possible? And I did not have the map available at that time, but indicated that we had looked at that. Upon further review, and at that meeting I answered, it was simply down in the very southwest portion of the city near Biscayne Boulevard and 185th. There is one spot to be completely transparent towards the north end of the city along uh, 207th uh, where there is residential RMF zoning where uh, El Dorado currently is, and then there is business zoning where the waterways currently is if a very large structure were to be built on the very north edge of that property, it is possible sometime in the future that this ordinance could affect that. Unlikely, uh, but it is possible. So I wanted to mention that that is the only other place that currently, as the city zoning map sits, this ordinance could have an effect. But mostly it's a couple of properties down in the southwest portion near Miami Gardens Drive and Biscayne Boulevard. And be happy to take any questions. We do recommend favorably for this. Do any members of the commission have any questions for Mr. Klopp? All right, I'm going to open this item for public comment. Anyone from the public wish to address us? Please come up and state your name and address. Good evening, Siu Wang, 31115 Northeast 184th Street. I'm here want to comment on this new proposed multifamily development on 183rd Street, if I'm not mistaken. And I live in Village by the Bay uh, next to Peninsula on William Island. Um, winter times, it takes 30 to 40 minutes to get out, just cross Biscayne Boulevard. I just want to know, do we have a plan how do we, the resident, could easily get out and come home? Okay, I, have, I have to interrupt you. We're yes. speaking about item B, and that's all at this time I can let you address is item B. I thought we talk about development 183rd Street. No. Mr. Attorney, I don't think that's on this item. No, that's not on this item. No. This is Sorry. About Apologies. This is about shadows. Thank you. All right, once, is there anyone else who would like to talk to this item? Please come up, state your name and address. Hello again. Um, Hi. My name is Marek Chmiel. I'm in Tercetto Villas on uh, 18424 Northeast 27th Court. This matter directly affects us because in the, in the bottom of that map, was the area which uh, Mr. Klopp was talking about. There's a 300 foot building being proposed right in the middle of next to two old people's homes and our townhouses and shadowing will be a big problem there. Now, I understand that multi-use- um, Mayor, can I just interject for a second? I mean, this is an ordinance about whether or not you should approve the casting of shadows uh, it's not about a specific project. If well, it, in fact, sorry, can I disagree? Because he mentioned two. Places. Excuse me. No, right now you do have to listen to okay. our city attorney. I will come back to you. Can I? Can I then I will reply come back. about the ordinance then? I will come back to you. Let's listen yeah. to him it's, first. It's, okay, it's about. Let me. Let me just finish. It's. It's about the uh, the general uh, applicability 
of, of shadows from one district on another. It's not site specific. So if there is a site specific request to cast shadows, that has to come back before the commission. I'll come back about site specific, then just talk about this particular opening of the door. Um, as long as your remarks are about this, this is item, about this I particular have no ordinance. problem with it. Aventura seems to be a very well-planned city, and I understand that you know people need to live here and you want more people to come. Now, opening this up from residential to business, uh, to casting residential shadow onto business, I feel may turn this place into something which is not what it is like now, which is a nice place to live. It may make it too crammed. We may be starting to open the door by being a very well-intentioned ordinance stretch into having something like Brickle in 10 years' time, where we'll have big buildings popping up all over the place. At the moment, our big buildings are nicely spaced out. There's a nice mix between business and residential. People feel they have some space to live. Once you open the door to this ordinance, we may see that in goodwill, one building will go up, another will go up, and next thing we know, five years, there's 20 high-rises, which will spoil the feeling of Aventura, make it from a nice suburban kind of city to a literal concrete jungle, because we've only got so much space. So yeah, I would like to see this not passed, and if there has to be an individual passing of each project as it comes, I think that's better, because then you can judge each one on its merits rather than open the door to developers who may abuse our good nature and say, well, this guy did it, I'm going to do it. 20, 30 down the road, they use this ordinance and the ability to cast the shadow as a way of turning it into a concrete jungle. I'd just like you guys to think about that. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. No applause. It's, no applause. It's not necessary. Excuse me, sir. I, I politely ask no applause. Okay? No, I wasn't talking to you. Um, anyone else from the audience? Anyone from the public? All right, then I'm going to close it to public comment, and I'm going to ask the city clerk for a roll call vote. Commissioner Friedland? Yes. Commissioner Joel? Yes. Commissioner Dr. Marks? Yes. Commissioner Narotsky? Yes. Commissioner Shelley? Yes. Vice Mayor Landman? Yes. And Mayor Weissman? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you so much. The next item on our agenda is item C. Could you please read that ordinance to us? An ordinance of the City of Aventura, Florida, amending Chapter 36, Retirement, Article 2, Police Pension Plan and Trust Fund, by amending Section 36-27, Buyback for Military Service, Prior Law Enforcement or Correctional Officer Service, to permit buyback of service credits for prior military service, providing for repeal, providing for severability, providing for inclusion in the code, and providing for an effective date. Thank you. Can I please have a motion for approval of this ordinance, Commissioner Joel, seconded by Commis Dr. Commissioner Dr. Linda Marks. I'm going to request the city manager please review this item. Thank you, Mayor. In years past, these, this ordinance has been modified to allow police officers to buy back prior police service. And also, if they served in corrections, they could buy back police service that would count towards their retirement. Not that they could retire early, but they could add service time to their, to their um, service time. Um, this would allow police officers to buy, who served in the military, to buy four years of military service back, and then this same right would extend to them for that, for that service. Um, one of the things uh, that was uh, also advanced during the, during the first hearing was having uh, the calculations for police officers who wanted to buy back time in this way to be covered or to make sure that they was available to them and the pension uh, the pension service is going to make that available to the to police officers through a portal similar to when they figure out when they're going to retire uh, okay any of the members of the commission have any questions for the city manager any questions or comments on this item? Okay, I'm going to open up the item for public comment. Anyone wishing to speak to this item? I'm going to close it to public comment and ask the city clerk for a roll call vote. Commissioner Friedland? 
Yes. Commissioner Joel? Yes. Commissioner Dr. Marks? Yes. Commissioner Narotsky? Yes. Commissioner Shelley? Yes. Vice Mayor Landman? Yes. And Mayor Weissman? Yes. The motion passes. Thank you. We next move into item number eight, our zoning hearings, quasi-judicial public hearings. I'm going to request that the city attorney provide the procedures for the quasi-judicial hearings for items 8A, B, and D. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, please be advised that items 8A, B, and D on the Commission's agenda are quasi-judicial nature. If you wish to object or comment upon the item, please inform the Mayor when the when she requests public comments, an opportunity for persons to speak on the item will be made available after the applicant and staff have made their presentations on the item. All testimony, including public testimony and evidence, will be made under oath or affirmation. Additionally, each person who gives testimony may be subject to cross-examination. If you refuse either to be cross-examined or to be sworn, your testimony will be given its due weight. The general public will not be permitted to cross-examine witnesses, but the public may request the commission to ask questions of staff or witnesses on their behalf. Persons representing organizations must present evidence of their authority to speak for the organization. Further details of the quasi-judicial procedures may be obtained from the city clerk. Thank you. I'm going to ask that the city clerk read the ordinance. If you're going to be speaking on item 8A, B, or D, I need you to stand up and raise your right hand and be sworn in at this time. If you're providing comments on any of these items, please be sworn in at this time. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Thank you. I, um, can I have a motion for approval of the ordinance made by Commissioner Shelley, seconded by Com Vice Mayor Landman? I'm going to request Community Development Director Kevin Klopp to please review the item. Thank you, Mayor. As you heard, this is a request for a future land use map change that's changing the comprehensive plan for the city. It's a 1.55 acre parcel. Just a uh, little bit of I background. Jack, for a second, uh, there wasn't a reading of the ordinance. The clerk didn't read the ordinance into the oh, record. I'm sorry. Yeah. Then can we please have the clerk read the ordinance now? An ordinance of the City of Aventura, Florida, amending the comprehensive plan by amending the future land use map designation for a 1.55 acre parcel of land located at 2785 Northeast 183rd Street from business and office to medium high density residential providing for conflicts, providing for severability, providing for inclusion in the comprehensive plan, and providing for an effective date. Thank you. Um, can, can Mr. Attorney, can I now go directly yes, to Mr. Klopp? And I didn't think I'd heard it read, but I thought oh, I must have missed something, because <laughs> I do that often. Uh, so thank you very much. Uh, it's 1.55 acre parcel, as you heard, at uh, 2785 Northeast 183rd Street. Just a bit of background. Uh, this was approved on first reading in June. Uh, along with the comprehensive map change, there was a rezoning also approved at first reading at that time. It's anticipated that the project, this is all a private application, uh, the same applicant will be uh, bringing forward a conditional use request in September. If the conditional use request is approved, the final step would be administrative site plan approval. So this is the future land use map amendment. This specific item uh, will take them one at a time. It is from business to medium high density residential. Here is the location of the property. As you see, uh, 183rd Street in this picture is to the left, which is south of the parcel. And you can see Biscayne Boulevard uh, towards the top, uh, just to the west of the parcel. Uh, it is within an area that is mostly uh, high-rise residential or uh, assisted living facilities. Staff review does find that this request for a change in the land use designation is appropriate. It is appropriate because of the surrounding development. It would be consistent. 
and because of the proximity to alternative mobility options, uh, Biscayne Boulevard being a uh, transit corridor and the uh, new Brightline station being within a reasonable uh, alternative mobility distance to this parcel. So with that, uh, staff does uh, bring forward the staff report and the previous hearing and recommend approval of this future land use map change. Thank you. Does the applicant have any comments? Good evening, Mr. Adler. <clears throat> Sorry, good evening, Madam Mayor, um, Commissioners, Brian Adler for the record, Law Offices at Bills and Sunberg, 1450 Brickell Avenue, Suite 2300, Miami, Florida. I am going to do a brief presentation this evening to address some of the items that was, were previously discussed and give a history of the application. Um, okay. So I'm joined this evening by Matt Rosenblatt from GOT183, who is the developer of the property. And over the last several months, I've had the opportunity to work with Matt and with Jean-Francois Gervais, the architect uh, of, from Idea of the Property, um, to really bring this, this item and this property to, to fruition. Um, the, the items that are before you this evening, and I just want to make a moment of clarity for, for, for everyone who's here, are only the rezoning, first the comp plan amendment and the rezoning. The conditional use items will be, in, will be presented in the, um, on September 13th. So those items are, are reviewing, is this the appropriate zoning and comprehensive plan designations on the property given in light of the surrounding properties? And if the city was today looking at we're going to create a zoning map on a property. How would we designate that today? Would we designate this property business and office 700 feet off of Biscayne Boulevard in a residential area surrounded mostly with RMF4 to the northeast, to the east, across the south? Um, or would we designate it RMF4 similar to the other properties in the area? Um, most properties that are designated B2 or business and office, either one on your comp plan or on your zoning map that are south of Lehman Causeway, William Lehman Causeway, are located on Biscayne Boulevard. This property is located 700 feet inside of Biscayne Boulevard. So Mr. Klopp gave you a, a detail of where the property is located. It's a, um, this property, you may know it, it's currently vacant. This previously was known as the Biscayne Rehabilitation Institute. Prior to that, it was actually approved for an exhibition center in the city of, uh, when it was in unincorporated Miami-Dade County. That, uh, that prior use is important to this evening's conversations with regard to traffic, and I'm gonna get to that because that's always the question that the commission asks and that the public wants to know. And I've seen there are, have been some objections that have been written in regarding traffic, and I'm gonna spend a bit of time dealing with traffic. This is one of the few vacant parcels left in Aventura. It is a redevelopment parcel, which the city has been looking for redevelopment. This shows you just the four different areas where the property, four different views of where the property is located. One item that Mr. Klopp mentioned is that it's located within, on the Biscayne Corridor. This property is, in, is located, and this is what's called the transit, the smart corridor. I know the city is very aware of the smart corridor and some of the items that the county has been proposing. There have been numerous proposals to try and bring higher density and higher intensities to the smart corridor. The smart corridor, there are six corridors that are created that where the county says, these are the corridors and locations where there should be higher and more intense development and density. Sometimes those densities are triple the amount of what is currently permitted under the city of Aventura. What we are doing is proposing a density not under the smart corridor, not under the plan, and this also shows you where it is. In, um, we are, we are also near Brightline, which is something that they look at from the county. We are proposing a density within the current city of Aventura code, not a future code that may be adopted by the county. But in a, if you do elect to approve this application, it does illustrate to the county that the city of Aventura is able to, is looking forward toward transit-oriented development and can achieve that without tripling the density and, and affecting the vision of the county. So in reviewing whether or not this application should be approved, um, this slide is the future land use map. And what I've done is I put, it, just to make it easier, a large uh, red point on where this property is located. Um, if you look, the brown is RMF4. So you can see that everything around here is brown. Everything to the north, the northeast, and to the south is brown. 
So is this consistent with your, with your, with your uh, comprehensive plan and with your code in, how to, in, in, a, in adopting changes to the comprehensive plan? Staff has gone through all of that analysis with regard to both the comprehensive plan and the rezoning. And if you approve this, this will just make this property contiguous RMF4 to the other properties adjacent to it. What I do want to point out and what I want to bring up is, is traffic. Um, and I've said that the property was previously developed with a 21,000, with a, with, a, with a medical office, and that was about 21,000 and change square feet. Currently under B2, your B2 regulations allow properties to go 12 stories or up to 20 stories with conditional use. They, they have certain restrictions on certain items, but we did an analysis of three different things. In reviewing your comp plan and your zoning, let's assume the worst at 93 units per acre, because the most you could develop on this property under the comprehensive plan and rezoning is 93 units per acre. I mean, sorry, is 60 units per acre, 93 total units. That's not what we're, we're tonight we don't have a plan before you, that is not what we're seeking. But for comparison purposes, we're gonna show you three items. One is what the 93 units would generate traffic-wise, both from a, a daily trips and and more importantly for the city, AM and PM peak hour trips. Those are your traffic trips. So one column is gonna be the proposed rezoning, worst case scenario, totally. The second column is what was previously existing and easily could be redeveloped with, which is a medical office at 21,000 square feet. The third is a, is a modest four story, four story medical office building. Not a 12 story, not a 2.0 FAR. If we were to do a four story medical office building, which can fit on that property with parking um, at 130, uh, I think it was about 138,000 square feet and what those traffic would generate. I've got three different charts up and I'm actually gonna look at my charts because it's hard to see. Yeah. So on your screen is this chart, okay? On the left side is what I wanna go to. The far left, if you look below, there's a legend. On the far left of the left side of the screen, residential at 93 total units, 60 units per acre, the absolute max we could seek and that the city could ever grant under conditional use currently. Then the next, that's the dark, the black column. The darker green is the 21,837 square foot medical office building. That is what was there immediately prior to demolition. Those were the trips that were, and the reason I'm showing you is, those were the trips that were actually on the road. So what we're proposing, you'll see that we are lower in total daily trips than what was actually there before. So we're replacing a more intense use with a less intense use. The third column, which is the light green, is a 43,800, sorry, I made, I said 138,000, that's the maximum that could be a 43,800 square foot, four story building medical office that can be approved administratively with, without coming to hearing is a, is, and meet all the requirements under the code. That would produce the left col the, the light green column on the left side. So you can see 691 total, 790, or current zoning, modest building, 1,689 without conditional uses, without anything else. The right screen has two columns. One is your AM and one is your PM peak hour. These are what's important to the city. At 93 units, we'll create 30, again, maximum number of units that could even be asked for, it's not what we're seeking, 37 trips, um, AM trips, 45 PM trips. You compare that to the previous existing 58 and 82, or what we could do as of right, 109, or 168 a.m. and p.m. peak hour trips. So the current zoning today would put three to four times the amount of a.m. and p.m. peak hour traffic than the rezoning at its maximum development could. Our current proposed rezoning would also allow a fraction again, large reduction from the previous trip. So there were trips on the road, there were trips that were allocated to the prior use, we are reducing those trips. So no matter how we cut it from a prior use or to the current zoning, we would be representing a very significant decrease. The rezoning and the comp plan amendment would represent a significant decrease. 
That is why in, in reviewing, we submitted our letter of intent, but staff has also, staff is, is charged with reviewing your code. You have professional staff. They've reviewed your code and they've analyzed each and every criteria for granting both a comprehensive plan amendment and for granting a rezoning amendment. And in analyzing that criteria, they have determined that we meet each and every one of those criteria, and that's why they're there to support, your, to support tonight's application. Land is a valuable resource. It is only getting more scarce. You have limited properties upon which there is a redevelopment, and so what we're looking to do is take a currently vacant, formerly underutilized parcel, and to take a corridor and put a very modern and iconic structure there that we will present to you if we're approved tonight for second reading. We'll present that on September 13th. Um, I, would, I know there are some objections here. I would like to reserve some time for rebuttal. I am here for questions, um, but I, I, I think this is a, a fairly straightforward and clear-cut um, application. So I'm here for, uh, for questions, or I can take questions after, after, after you hear from the rest of the, um, from, and the rest of the speakers. Let me, let me ask my commission. Is there anyone on the commission that has a question for Mr. Adler, Dr. Linda Marks? How did you arrive at the numbers that you are presenting to us tonight on the traffic? Certainly. So this was a, actually a traffic study that has been submitted by David Plummer and Associates, one of the top um, traffic engineers. There, um, when you are analyzing traffic, cities, municipalities, government, they're bound essentially by, so that all the engineers use the same books. It's the ITE manual, the uh, International Traffic Engineers Manual. And so they review, and this is standard adopted, and they take the square footage, and this is, these are based on numerous studies that, that create these, these items that they review. So the traffic engineers review that. They take the, pro so they took the prior, immediately prior use, they said that would be allocated, and that was your middle column. They then said, okay, if we were to do a, and we came up with a 43, just doing a four-story building, what could fit parking without, you know, without going higher, without doing anything else, uh, because it could actually go triple or quadruple that, well, triple that, I think, under the, under the code with, you know, with, with other reviews. Um, and they analyzed what that square footage would be and the trips that would be associated with that. And then they took the, uh, and we took the maximum that we could seek under your, because we don't have a project here before you. If we did, we'd use, and next, if we come before conditional use, we'll actually use an ex actual project, which would even be lower. But we said, what is the worst case scenario? 93 units. And so the traffic engineer analyzed those trips based on those 93 units and created a report that, and the report is part of your record. It is, it is a much longer report than my charts. I do have one additional chart, which just merely shows, um, and this is also from, these are from the traffic engineer. Just basically the, the, just very simple, 93 units today, what we're seeking under a rezoning, what could easily be built, taking out even the middle one. So this, this really shows that we are, we are proposing a significant reduction in traffic over what could be built today. So, so understanding what you're saying, here's my question. You're saying that there would be 37 trips during peak hours. So let's say 8.30 to 9.30 in the morning, 9 to 10. What do you call peak hours? It's generally 7 to 9. 7 to 9. Okay. If you have 90 units and the cost of these units is going to be about in what range? Higher end, lower end? Uh, these are so these are intended to be larger size units mm -hmm. um, and in my letter of intent and I can go in a little bit more but there is demand for this type of unit and for larger units especially with with how COVID has changed the world so people are often working more at home and that hasn't even been taken into account because we're using even the current manuals but I think even there's even less traffic from people living in residences because they are working from home so okay so if they're larger units it's possible that you might have families of four or five living in these units as opposed to maybe just two people? So the, there, they could be larger numbers okay. of people, but a lot of it is intended more for, I mean, the, so a lot of the units, more and more people are taking bedrooms. It used to be people turned dens into bedrooms. Now people are turning bedrooms into offices. I'm, so yeah, they very so often here, have Here's the office. thing, I'm trying to understand if there are larger units and if they're higher in cost, Likely there would there could let a family of four if they're a little bit older you could have four cars in that one unit hypothetically, so I'm trying to wrap my arms around the number 37, 
during peak hours when let's say the building at any time is only 50% occupied. Two cars even living at the same time from 40 units is 80 cars, not 37. So what I'm trying to understand, because clearly traffic is an issue in the city, I'm trying to understand, let's say that, let's say it's not 37, let's say it's 40 or 50 or 60 cars. How long would it take to get those cars? They're kind of closest to Biscayne, correct? Okay, so how long would it take to get those cars out onto Biscayne, and what would that do then to the um, rest of the people who are further into Williams Island? <clears throat> so that, that really is my question, just trying to understand how to best serve the needs of the developer, but also the needs of our community. So, I, and I'm, I'm glad you bring up those numbers, because even higher, so you brought up 40 cars, 50 cars. So the immediate prior use was 58 cars. <coughs> So even if we went up to and when was that? That was uh, I think it was two years ago. It wasn't that long ago that it was demolished. Two years ago. Yeah. That's all it was. Yeah, it was a medical office. It was, it was, and they relocated, and so this is a redevelopment. So yeah, it was. Traffic's not an issue. Okay. Yeah. Commissioner, you live down that street, right? I take it every day. Yeah, yeah and it's, so it's that's really not, not an issue. Okay. And then also in comparison, again to to thirty-seven to one hundred nine of what can be built, it would have to be, you know, fourfold to. Thank you. Any other commissioners have any comments on Commissioner Friedland? So I just want to add, um, I grew up on Williams Island Boulevard. My parents still live there, ingress out, you know, in and out all the time. That's been my life. I do remember the medical building. I remember stopping for the cars coming in and out all the time. Um, that's what it was. Like we talk about Aventor, you know, our, you know, growing. It's a, we have to remember that. We don't own this land. This isn't city land. We can't decide. So if we don't let this residential building come, it could be a bigger business, a bigger commercial business with a lot more traffic than that medical office was. That would terrify me if we don't rezone it. Um, I'm hoping this is, you know, kind of controlled in the area compares, comparable to what could come. So I do remember that we don't own it. We can't turn this into another park or a playground. That's not an option. Somebody owns it, they're going to develop it. And I think we're a lot better off with this option than some of the others we could have. Thank you. Thank you. Any other commissioners? Then I'm going to open the item to public comment. I'm going to ask you to please come up if you would like, you, Kevin, you'd like to speak. If I could just clarify, are you taking public comment on both the land use plan amendment and rezoning? On A. Okay. So we will read the rezoning and do public comment again once we get to the rezoning? I just want to make sure. Unless you have something and the attorney agrees that we'll do two at once? Oh, I mean, I, I would defer to, to Kevin. I mean, if he feels there's value in doing them both at the same time, we can. Otherwise, you know, I guess let's do A first and then go to B. Well, I think I'm, the only value is then the co the public will be all speaking. Right, so as then, to if I'm hearing correctly, we're going to defer public comment until we've covered the second item uh, and do them together. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I think so. I think what Kevin's saying is so we'll read B into the record, and then if the commission has any questions about B, the commission can ask those questions, and then uh, after Kevin and presents we'll take B, public and comment then we'll take on both on A, both a and, and B. B, right? Right. Okay, so that is what we are doing. We're going to let um, the city clerk read Ordinance B. We're going to go forward with Ordinance B. And when it comes to public po comment, the public will be able to comment on either item A or B or both of them together or separately. An okay. ordinance of the City of Aventura, Florida, amending the official zoning map of the City of Aventura by amending the zoning designation from B2 Community Business District to RMF4, multifamily high density residential, for a 1.55 acre parcel of land located at 2785 Northeast 183rd Street, providing for severability, providing for inclusion in the code, and providing for an effective date. Thank you. Can I have a motion for approval of this ordinance? Made by Bill at Commissioner Billy Joel, second by Vice Mayor Landman. I'm going to request Community Development Director Kevin Klopp Please review the item. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you for the opportunity to do that. I think this will be helpful for us to all uh, comment all at once. 
Um, but I do have a few different things to mention because of the rezoning versus the plan change. So the rezoning changes from B2 community business to RMF4 residential multifamily. Uh, the location is obviously the same. Uh, the revisions are the same. You heard the shadow. Uh, the shadow uh, revision would relate to this, uh, and the conditional use request would come forward in September. The standards of review for rezoning are in Chapter 3173 of the City Code. As you heard Mr. Adler say, all seven standards are met. In general, this would be consistent with the comprehensive plan if you amend it, and even if you don't, it is com uh, consistent with the policies about traffic, uh, transportation, et cetera. Public facilities are all available to serve the parcel, uh, provides for orderly development in character with the neighborhood. And I think that's the most important part of that is this rezoning would be in character with the surrounding properties. The site is vacant, uh, having, as you heard, the prior development been demolished a couple of years ago. Uh, commercial development under existing zoning would re generate a higher traffic level, as you just heard, and I agree with that analysis uh, that you heard. What I wanted to mention is this is only a 1.55 acre parcel. So on a regional perspective, regardless of what you do, development of this parcel isn't going to significantly change the level of service in the area. It, it is not a major traffic generator. It is only 1.55 acres. And with that, uh, I would uh, request or uh, recommend approval. I did have to uh, add one thing to the record. The ordinance as it currently reads says it would be effective immediately. That should be effective upon the state finding our comprehensive plan amendment in compliance. It takes about 31 days, but technically, the rezoning cannot be effective until the state finds comp plan amendment uh, in compliance. Thank you. Okay. Do commissioners have any comments or questions for Mr. Klopp? Seeing as there are none, then I think I'm right in saying I'm going to open the public comment. Unless the applicant wants to comment on uh, Mr. Klopp's presentation or make his own presentation on B. Thank you. Oh, I and for the record, again, Brian Adler, Law Office of Bills in Suburb, 1450 Brickell Avenue, Suite 2300. I only want to incorporate my, for the record, I have to incorporate my prior presentation by, by, by this statement into this item. So, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I do have one question before I open to public comment. So, Mr. Klopp, you're telling us that this proposal would give us less cars on the road, less vehicular traffic. Potentially, Significantly. Yes. Potentially less traffic. Well, I don't know what, I don't know. I saw charts with numbers on them. So Correct. were those I agree potential with that. numbers? Yes, they are potential numbers. As what Mr. Adler said was the 93 units is the maximum residential density that could go on this parcel. And so his numbers were potential numbers, not actual numbers. And, and the other two buildings that it was compared with were commercial buildings. Which we were would using be much actual higher. numbers. Correct. And you're saying that indeed this would pro this would um, have less vehicular traffic. Correct. Okay. Then I'm going to open it to public comment. If you wish to address the commission, please come up. You can form a line, state your name and your address, and you have three minutes. Hello. My name is Simona Neide Parkman, and I'm president of Admiral Sport, 2851 Northeast 183rd Street. So we are effect, going to be affected directly by this new development uh, because we have two buildings, East Building and West Building, and this building is going to be built right in front of the West Building. So it's going to be higher. We have 22 floors, and we have in our association, we have 634 units. And we see traffic all the time without new development of 25 floors. And probably, yes, it's going to be less than if you put commercial, build something commercial there, but it's still a lot of traffic. Part of the road was going to Williams Island. It's only one lane. 
And like morning and evening, when people going to work and coming from work or taking children to school, we still have traffic. When we have construction going on on 133rd Street, it used to take us 35 minutes from Biscayne to Admiral's Port to get home after work. This is insane. Plus, it's going to cover all the view of the West Building, the air quality, the electrical, the surface. Everything, everything is going to affect us. And we opposing this project. And I have petitions from my association. Can I? You can give them to the city clerk. Thank you. Our community really ask you to look really hard in this. I mean, it's one thing when you build six floors, even nine floors, but 25 floors, we have a, problems with FPL is as it is. So how you gonna correct all these issues and give us more, less traffic and more comfortable life with new development? Okay, I gotta tell you, this is your time to oh, speak. I'm sorry. It's not about asking questions. I'm sorry. So please go ahead. So that's what we would like to know, and we need your help because it's a big community, it's peninsula, it's Williams Island. We're all gonna be affected by this. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good evening, Chris Martin, uh, 18416 Northeast 27th Court. I'm Trezetto Villas. Uh, so just to make a comment on the uh, comment from the city development manager uh, where he said it's kind of characteristic with the neighboring area, um, I would disagree with that because this proposed zoning would allow a building up 295 feet, uh, even higher if you throw in the elevator. Um, that's way taller than anything else. And if you look at the map, our little property, which is two stories tall or three stories tall, is surrounded on two sides by this property. So it is definitely gonna be uh, overshadowed physically and metaphorically with this property. It is not in co concert with our little neighborhood we have there. So 295 is crazy tall for that particular area. And you look at any other building in the area, I challenge you to find a, a building that tall. Secondly, I also would like to just comment that this particular zoning request uh, is tied to a particular property, the Tal property. Um, their prop and all the numbers they were given is based upon a certain design, height and number of units per floor, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so we are, we, you guys are all thinking about the property in mind when we're having this zoning conversation. That property uh, specifically is going to cause problems for both the old age home as well as our particular property. And I know that particular notice was taken off for two months from now, so we'll be back. But their current design can't fly, or it won't, it won't fly. So I think this is a bit of a moot point because they have to go back to the drawing board from what I can consider the truth uh, and come back with a different design because they can't do it the way it is. So thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, my name is Brian Vujnovich. I'm a resident at 2708 Northeast 184th Terrace and Terzetto Villas. I'm also a board member of Terzetto Villas. Um, I'm speaking here tonight to oppose uh, the current proposed development uh, for reason number one being it's completely out of scale with our neighborhood. The current zoning uh, allowment for this area, if I'm not mistaken, is for nine stories and 135,000 square feet. And the developer is proposing more than double by going to 290,000 square feet and 25 stories. And if you look at the um, Admiral's Port, the Commodore, the two retirement communities, the new development that's being developed by Harry Gross on 185th and tw uh, 28th Court, uh, which is 17 stories, none of them come close to the height of this building. And it is completely out of scale for this part of Aventura. Um, with that being said, we have a, a substantial issue in that part of town with FPL and the substation. Um, we are the first to lose power in Aventura, and we are the last to get power back. 
I lose power in my home on average once per quarter where it flickers on and off and it takes a while to come back on. And that happens in Terzetto Villas at the Lubavitch uh, Synagogue at the temple and um, our surrounding uh, neighbors. And this building is going to propose, is going to impede on the current power grid in the area. And it's a huge liability for us. Um, and lastly, I'd like to contest the shadow study that's been provided. It's completely inaccurate, in my opinion. I think that um, it needs to be addressed and looked at further. I emailed everybody on this panel and this commission and, and your honor mayor um, pointing out the exact details as to how it's wrong, how the sun is not being accounted for on December 20th at the right degree, at the right angle, um, and then it, it's completely inaccurate. And, you know, I moved to Aventura because I don't want to live in Brickell. I don't want to live in a high density construction zone and I work in development. And I think that the approval of this building without any concessions for the benefit to the community would be an abomination to our neighborhood and to our community. I thank you for your time and consideration. Okay, sir, I just want you to know we're not approving any, any building at this point in time. So just understand that, that's all. I understand thank you this for is your the, letter. the second you reading and we're getting a lot closer to it, thank you. Hi, my name is Brianna Spohr. I live at 18407 Northeast 27th Court. Um, I'm also opposed to uh, both A and B. Um, you know, one, this is the building will be more than double the size of the building currently allowed by the zoning. It's going to stand at 315 feet. And as one of the gentlemen before me mentioned, that I also live in Terrazota Video villas and on two sides it will absolutely tower over us uh it will shadow the area um and really um you know affect our community that's only at three uh stories tall um it, and it should be closer to the adjacent residential properties allowed uh, in the current zoning. Um, you know, also one of the reasons that I moved to Aventura is part of the com is to be a part of the community and just continuing to add in a highly dense area uh, will not help us. And as you know, the gentleman before showed on all the maps that almost every single property within Aventura is already used and populated. So by continuing to add, um, is not going to help here. Also, you know, I, I appreciate all the traffic studies, but actually having to live and drive it every day, um, you know, is a very different story. Sitting in your car is not fun during rush hour. And to get onto Biscayne, you know, also think about all the people that are going to be traveling down 95 and trying to get off exit 16 on Ives Dairy every day is not fun. And I'm sure you've all lived it before, whether it's, you know, to work or on the way back and hitting all the different school zones along the way um, is, you know, just going to be a detriment to to all of our lives. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, uh, Marek again from Tercero Villas. I, most of my points have been raised by other people, but um, the commissioner brought up a very interesting point about the 37 car journeys, uh, maybe up to 58, 90 apartments between two to four houses. How many of those people will be going to school? how many work people will be coming in the morning. I honestly think the schedule of the numbers I heard from Mr. Adler were kind of laughable, 37 journeys. We have 62 families in Tercero Villas. If I sat there for two hours, I'd count more than 100 journeys coming in and out of ours, and we're little townhomes. The school run alone would be half the building. And then you're looking how many people come in and out, Already we had roadworks um, from uh, that, that building all the way to Williams Island. You mentioned Williams Island. And when you change the roadworks for just two weeks, it took me from my house to Biscayne going round over 15 minutes. And that's without a 300-foot monstrosity with somewhere in the region of three to 400 people there. Um, the medical center was never that busy. I was there. It's kind of a little bit of a joke. How did you make up your numbers? Was it during peak times? Was it up until 2 o'clock in the morning? Were people getting deliveries? This is off the hook. The numbers and the way I heard it is this is going to be nice in keeping. I don't know if the old people living right next door 
in that residential building will think being blocked out from the sun in their last years is in keeping with Aventura. I don't think my kids playing in dusk all the time is in keeping with Aventura. 300 feet is a joke, and I think everybody knows it in this room. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Okay, then I'm going to close the item for public comment, and I'm going to ask the clerk for a roll call vote. Do I have a commissioner that wants to say something? Okay. All right, I thought I might have. Roll call vote. All right, so this will be for item 8A for the vote for that item. Commissioner Friedland? Yes. Commissioner Joel? Yes. Commissioner Dr. Marks? Can I ask the attorney? I've just heard a lot this evening that I would like to digest, not to say I'm against doing this, but just trying to put everything kind of... Um, is there a way to abstain or to ask that we just table this for one meeting, or is this just you, a yes or a no? Well, you, you can abstain unless you have a conflict of interest. You could ask for a motion to defer, which takes priority over the motion that's on the floor, but you'd have to get a second, and there'd have to be a vote to defer. And then would that be something we could talk about at our next workshop, or, or that's published already now? Well, you can talk about it whenever you want. I mean, sure, you could talk about it at your next workshop. But right now what's on the floor is a motion to approve, you know, this item. All right, I am going to ask for a motion to defer. Do I have a second? The motion failed because of lack of a second. So we're continuing with the vote. Uh, yeah. Right, so I'll need a vote from Commissioner Dr. Marks. I'll vote no. Commissioner Narotsky? Yes. Commissioner Shelley? Yes. Vice Mayor Landman? Yes. And Mayor Weissman? Yes. The motion passes. The next um, will be for item 8B. Commissioner Friedland? Yes. Commissioner Joel? Yes. Commissioner Dr. Marks? No. Commissioner Narotsky? Yes. Commissioner Shelley? Yes. Vice Mayor Landman? Yes. And Mayor Weissman? Yes. The motion passes. Thank you. The next item on the... Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much. The next item on our agenda, item C, uh, Mr. Wasson announced that it's been deferred. So I'm going to request that the city clerk read the resolution, item D. A resolution of the City Commission of the City of Aventura, Florida. Let's give these people a second. Yes, ma'am. Okay. <clears throat> Resolution of the City Commission of the City of Aventura, Florida, granting conditional use approval pursuant to Section 31-144C2G of the City Code of Ordinances to permit a bowling facility in Esplanade, Aventura, located at 19505 Biscayne Boulevard, tenant space 3290, and providing for an effective date. Um, let me have a motion for approval of this item made by Commissioner Friedland, seconded by Vice Mayor Landman. I'm going to request Community Development Director Kevin Klopp to please review the item with us. Thank you, Mayor. Very briefly, this is a conditional use request, as you heard, to allow what we call commercial recreation. A bowling alley is considered commercial recreation, and the Commission reserves the right to approve that as a conditional use. Pinstri Pinstripes is essentially a restaurant with some bowling alleys as a uh, additional uh, amenity within their uh, restaurant. I do have just a couple of pictures. They sent very many very nice pictures, uh, but this is from the outside. This is at Esplanade, where Sears uh, previously was located. Um, and this is just a picture of the interior. It's a nice family-style restaurant. And it does have some bowling alleys uh, as something that you can do to entertain yourself while you're at the restaurant. Uh, we recommend favorably. The only reason, again, this is before you is because bowling requires your approval. 
The applicant is here if you have any questions for them. Would the applicant like to address the commission? Um, I'm going to open this item for any commission questions. Any questions for Mr. Klopp, Dr. Marks? It isn't, I, I'm familiar with the Pinstripes product. Aren't you, are you going to have bocce ball in there too? Yes. So only bowling is prohibited in our city, but bocce ball is not? I just want to understand this. I don't know. Okay, I didn't then. I think our city had a bowling alley in. It's a, gr it's a great facility. Yeah. It's a great facility. And I'm surprised they didn't bring it to a workshop so we could have discussed it. It's under construction, so we wanted to get in front of you as soon as possible. <laughs> I certainly hope you're not telling the truth. No. It, How could it be under construction if we haven't given our approval? Esplanade is under construction. Oh, Esplanade's been and under construction for pin, a long time. Yeah, and they have signed <laughs> pinstripes as a tenant. And so before they went any further, we wanted to make sure that the bowling part of the restaurant was going to be allowed. Commissioner Friedland. Well, like as the mayor said, you know, we do like to see these properties at the workshops so we have an idea. But from the picture I just saw, it's only four bowling alleys. Is that the intention or is it more than that? Four lanes. Four lanes? I'm hoping it's more than four lanes. Just to understand that I just want to know. Yes. Didn't tell from uh, the picture. For this property, we'll have 12 bowling lanes. They'll all be similarly paired just like that. It'll take up approximately 30% of the third floor of our venue, but it's right next to a beautiful out or bar, a patio outside for 80 plus, and then two main ballrooms where we'll be able to hold events for wedding receptions, birthday party, corporate dinners. So uh, that's just the third floor. That's not even the first floor with the restaurant for 150 or so, another bar and another private dining room for about 20. And so I'm just pondering, are we then gonna be asked for approval of a liquor license? <laughs> <laughs> no. no? Okay, good. <laughs> oh, they don't? Yeah. <laughs> We're in the clear. There's to a school. Yeah. Okay. Um, anyone else on the commission want to comment or question? Okay, I'm closing it to our comment. Does anyone from the public wish to address the commission on this item? Seeing as there's none, I'm going to close the item for public comment and ask the clerk for a roll call vote. Do you want to speak? Uh, I was just going to introduce myself. My name is Mitch Meller, the Director of Expansion with Pinstripes, just for the record. Great. Pleasure to meet Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner what? Friedland? Yes. Commissioner Joel? Yes. Commissioner Dr. Marks? Yes. Commissioner Narotsky? Yes. Commissioner Shelley? Yes. Vice <laughs> Mayor Landman? Yes. And Mayor Weissman? Yes. The motion passes. Thank you. Uh, the next item on the agenda is resolution and public input. I'm going to request the city clerk read the item nine. A resolution of the city commission of the city of Aventura, Florida, accepting and adopting in principle subject to annual revision and authorization, the city of Aventura capital improvement program document for fiscal year 2022-23 <coughs> to 2026-27 authorizing the city manager to do all things necessary to carry out the aims of this resolution and providing for an effective date. Can I have a motion for approval of this resolution? Made by Commissioner Joel, seconded by Commissioner Shelley. I'm going to request the city manager review this item. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, the city each year passes a five-year capital improvement plan or program, and it's a way for the city to look to the future to plan for development, replace um, equipment, and to place hold things that we look or might do in the future. Each year, the most important year of the plan is the, the first year of the plan. It gives us the ability to operate, maintain our city parks, our transportation services, provide equipment for these various departments, um, all different <laughs> things, maintaining uh, all our government buildings that you see in the city. Uh, streets and repaving, it, it funds our landscaping, and generally the overall condition of the city. Uh, some of the things that we, some of the highlights this year, um, in the parks we'll be doing some security enhancements, we're replacing a shade, sh a shade shelter, um, soccer nets, 
benches, trash cans, some LED lighting in the, in the uh, parks. Uh, we'll do some crosswalk enhancements. We'll replace some of the bikes of our bike share if they, if they need it. It also covers all our contractual services, landscaping, uh, busing, our freebie or on-demand services, TV maintenance, to just to name some of the things that this, this uh, budget covers. Okay, are there any questions? I'm gonna open it to public comment. Does the public wish to address this item? Seeing there's none, I'm gonna close it to public comment. And I'll ask the clerk for a roll call vote. Commissioner Friedland? Yes. Commissioner Joel? Yes. Commissioner Dr. Marks? Yes. Commissioner Narotsky? Yes. Commissioner Shelley? Vice Mayor Landman? Yes. And Mayor Weissman? Yes. The motion passes. Thank you so much. That means, brings us to item 10 in reports. And I would just like to report to the public that state school grades have come out and that both ACES and SOFR High School are both A schools. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Anyone else from the commission have a report or something too? All right, then we're open for public comments. Anyone from the public who wishes to come and speak before us, please state your name and address and be aware that you have three minutes. Hello, my name is Sandy Brockwork. I live at 20940 Northeast 37th Avenue here in beautiful Aventura. First of all, thank you for allowing me to speak and definitely thank you all for your service. From my last visit, I'm aware that this is not a time for question and answer dialogue. Therefore, I will not ask a question. <laughs> However, I would like to make a suggestion or two. But first, a little background. I'm sure you're aware that there is quite an uproar nationwide regarding the placement of pickleball courts in or near residential communities. Nationwide, there have been multiple instances of residents complaining of too much noise created by pickleball when the courts are placed too close to people's homes. <laughs> I'd like to make the following suggestions. I'd like to suggest that the city creates specific rules and guidelines regarding the placement of pickleball courts in residential neighborhoods, taking into account both the wants and desires of the players and the concerns of nearby residents. I do think it is this city's duty to regulate these types of, of installations when they will impact the ability for residents living near the courts to enjoy time on their property in a peaceful and quiet manner without a nuisance. The research seems pretty clear that placing a pickleball court within 100 feet of a person's home would have serious negative effects for that homeowner. Both the property values and the quality of life will be negatively impacted. Creating rules and regulations that serve everyone's interest would be a great way to avoid the pitfalls that other cities have been facing. Many communities have had to address these alleged, excuse me, alleged noise and nuisance violations, but after the fact. And this has, unfortunately, at times, ended up in litigation. Perhaps the city would want to uh, explore solutions before this becomes an issue. Second, if you agree that you should look into this, perhaps a temporary moratorium can be put in place to stop the building of any new pickleball courts near, excuse me, near or in private communities until such time as the city creates and institutes rules and regulations for such. And lastly, another suggestion would be in order to avoid conflicts between communities, I suggest that the issuance of any permits being requested for the installation of pickleball courts in a residential neighborhood be given a duly noticed public hearing to allow nearby residents to express their concerns. Lastly, and this is really important, I am not against pickleball. In fact, I'm pretty sure that at some time I'm going to become a player. But the placement of courts cannot be at the expense of neighboring, neighboring properties. Finally, I would respectfully ask that these comments be included in part of the minutes for this meeting. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, there was a line.
I, I wasn't, I, I don't watch people in line, so it's up to the line. If they want you to go, it was stated, please get in the line. Okay. Hi, Sue Wang, 3115, Northeast 184th Street. Sorry about a little confusing. I'm here still talk about Founders Park South. I have said the park is very dear for many local residents and for many rich and Rich and wealthy, they could go different state, different part, different countries. And for many of us, this is the only place for us to vacation. And many working people cannot go away due to work and families. This is a place. And also this last gentleman had a good point. For pickleball court, we do have to consider it's not too close to our residents. And uh, I previously, I had suggested we could have built some of those at Founders North, which is furthest from any residential building, or we could have built some at Veterans, as many residential buildings away from it. I just hope our city commission and uh, could reconsider the decision, and uh, we all have a nice community to enjoy. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my, my name is Harriet Brotman. I live at 21050 Northeast 38th Avenue. And I want to talk about pickleball. And as you know, pickleball is the hottest sport in the country. Every city has pickleball courts except Aventura. And Aventura is supposed to be called the city of excellence. So let's live up to our name. Let's be excellent. Anyway, I understand that the money was already appropriated, I think. And I understand the courts have to be near the tennis courts for maintenance in Founders Park, if I'm not mistaken. And um, well, the flower beds that are nearby that are provided by the city will have to be moved. And you guys are going to take the expense of moving the flowers and the vegetables, which I think is very nice of you. And I know it's summertime and many people are absent that would have come. And if you look around, that most of us want pickleball courts soon. And just again, Aventure is the city of excellence. Let's live up to its name. Thank you. You took my line. Oh. <laughs> Good evening. My name is Karen Deku. I live at the Point of Aventura, apartment 2801. I also am here in support of pickleball. I pay taxes in Aventura, like everybody, but I have to go to Hollywood to play pickleball. I don't think that's appropriate. I've lived in Aventura for 18 years. I've only started to play pickleball a year ago, but I play every day. And I drive to Hollywood every day. When I have a beautiful city here, a city of excellence, I appreciate the gentleman's remarks about noise, but there are many ways to mitigate that noise. I don't know where he's talking about the courts, but if they're being built, I would be very happy and go home and not have to come back here again. I am in full support of pickleball. My tax dollars should be spent for something that I can do in Aventura other than shop at the Aventura Mall. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, I'm Edna Schenkel at 21205 Northeast 37th Avenue in Aventura, uh, a neighbor of Karen's and Harriet's, and I also am very much in support of pickleball. Uh, we do travel to Hollywood, we travel to Hallover in Bell Harbor uh, to play. And there are lots of, obviously, lots of people in Aventura who play. But it's, um, it's an intergenerational game. And I think it would be such a, a positive addition to our community. I mean, we have lots of grandparents who have lots of grandkids. And you can play with your grandchild. And you can play with your child and obviously, you know, uh, I think it would add so much to our community. The, I know it's been approved, and it's been lingering for a long time. And no, it hasn't been approved. I'm mistaken. I thought that it was and that this was. Excuse me. It hasn't been lingering for a long time. We, we've, the city manager can possibly address it. OK. And maybe it's been lingering in my mind for a long time because I wanted The commission approved the funding for the park. It's under design and we'll be going out to bid shortly for that. Uh -huh. and, that and that, the approval of the bid will come back to the commission for their approval. 
Uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay, okay, well, at least we're making progress, and, and I just do you want you to know that there are many people in the community who would approve it, who would want it, and, um, and we don't want to infringe on other people's property. It's in the park. I mean, there's tennis that's there. That makes noise, too. Uh, pickleball is not so much noisier than tennis, and people do have a fun time playing. But I also will tell you that there is a, um, a pickleball, the USA Pickleball, uh, you may or may not know, has a toolkit for community planners uh, that has guidelines and estimates for building courts. So it might be useful to know that. Um, thank you for your time. And thank you. Mayor, Commissioner, how you doing? Larry Sobel, 3300 Northeast 91st Street. Pickleball's here. It's in every, it's in Fort Lauderdale. It's in Hollywood. There's 65 courts in Naples. It's the fastest growing sport in the country. It's a sport made for middle-aged people and above. Let's be honest about it. There's not many sports for the guys. You have softball in the park with young guys. You have soccer with young guys. What do you have for us? Let's be honest. We walk around a track. Come on, this is great sport, exercise, it's a lot of fun. Don't be the only, you're the crown jewel of South Florida. What are you doing? This should be an automatic. Don't listen to what he's telling you. The, the pickleball is all over, it doesn't destroy homes. It's not delinquency, these are good people that come to play. That's it, I mean, really, it's an easy uh, thing to know. Without pickleball, they're gonna go other places which is happening now. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Good evening. I'm sorry I'm not talking about pickleball. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my name is Jordan Owens. I'm currently residing in Miami Gardens, so my address isn't within your guys' areas, but it is 151 Northeast 209th Terrace. I am a application designer for mobile apps, so on your phone, and a user experience builder. Um, with that being said, sure, I have plenty of ideas that can um, vastly cover a lot of different industries and markets, but um, I'm here to speak about a pretty decent concern when it comes to data. Um, scary enough, Identity theft and um, data crimes cost Americans $50 billion a year. And I wanna say crime in general is over $1 trillion. So that technically puts us under as Americans, frankly speaking. Um, so in my endeavors of building up my service capacity and a portfolio of items being mobile applications, I want to extend some useful insight, possibly some services, to help with um, accounting for a lot of loss. Uh, with that being said, I want to present QR codes as a form of um, police measures or public safety measures to ensure that there is the ability to reach um, public safety in any time of concern. So uh, I think a good place to put something as vast of a project that I am comprehending this to be, like across, well, I don't know if we're close to Aventura now, but uh, the mall specifically. Um, but it's, like I said, something that covers a large area and could be very useful. But I just came to introduce myself, really. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, good evening, everyone. My name is Joshua Smith, and I reside in an incorporated date at 18642 Northeast 18th Avenue. I'm here to talk to you guys about bringing awareness and wellness to the city of Aventura. So my, my company is named Mind Over Matter Allied Health, and I'm a mobile massage therapist and physical therapist assistant. As of now, I'm in the city of North Miami Beach, and I provide massage and chiropractic work for the police officers and also the employees. So I would like to extend my services and come to the city of Aventura and do the same thing. Thank you, guys. Okay, thank you. The city manager will reach out to you. Okay, thank you so much. Anyone else? Okay, then can I have a motion for adjournment made by Commissioner Shelley, seconded by Vice Mayor Landman. Anyone opposed?
Nope. Thank you.